Hey everybody, I wanna share with you a little workflow hack that I've got related to exporting out objects into D5 and using the replace from asset tool. So let me show you what I mean. I'm working on this project right now. It's a small, you know, one family residential house, but the landscape architect has just sent over a file with a bunch of locations for trees, okay? So this workflow is really useful if you have any proxy items, let's say it's trees, people, or even if you're migrating from another piece of software, you know, think about like the Enscape proxies. This is an easy way for you to actually replace it with D5 content. So let me show you how it works. The issue is if you were to go and live sync this right now, you can't replace the asset. So let me show you what happens. If I hit replace or sync, and I go here, I can't actually just click on one of these, right? Because all of them are tied to here. And if I were to go to replace the asset, it would just replace all of them. That doesn't work. So this is what you can do. So before you break the sync, just turn off that layer. And I'm gonna pause that. And now it's not there. So now what I'm gonna do is actually turn back on my tree layer and export out portions of this. Then I can replace each asset. So watch this. So I'm going to go over here to export and I'm going to do selected only, right? And I'm going to keep it to two layers. Now watch this. And I'm just going to save this to somewhere and I'm going to call it right side trees. And now it's building a D5A file that I can import. If you're unfamiliar with this method, this is actually the third you know, kind of import method that you have into D5. You know, you have direct import, you have live sync. Well, export is another method. So if I go over to import, then grab that file I just created. I'm gonna call it my right side trees. Okay, it's gonna load in. I'm gonna drag it out. And I'm going to just sync. That way it's in the right spot. And now when I go over here, if you see how it's come in as individual objects, look at that. Each one is individual. And when I click it, the whole group gets selected. I could ungroup it if I want, but the point is each of these are individual objects. So now this is where the fancy hack or trick comes into play. I've shift selected within the group, okay? It's very important you do it within the group and you don't click the group. This is different from the shift click, okay? Trust me, I'll show you what happens if you do the group method. So now if you go over to replace from assets, that's what this little guy is, and you go and select some beautiful D5 asset. Let's go over to nature. Whoops. We'll go to flowering trees, and I'm just gonna go with this, just so you can see. These little poles are going to turn into this. So check that out. So this is basically, just to kind of step back, precise locations of trees from a landscape architect, okay? So why would you do this? Well, you know, people are very precise about where things should go. And sometimes it's easier to do placement in your source software rather than in D5 because you have all these snaps, you've got precision. Um, so sometimes it's better to do it outside of D5 and then import it in. So now that I've done that, right, each of these trees are their own objects. So if I, you know, just click one of them, that's that one tree. It can be moved and everything and that cylinder is gone. So one of the things you're probably saying is, well, Andy, it looks kind of samey samey and you hate that, right? Well, I do hate that. So check this out. To go one step further, you've got these little guys right here. You've got random location, random rotation, and random size. So let me click this a couple times. So that's mixing it up. I can even do randomized scale, right? And you know, obviously this is like a little extreme and I probably wouldn't click that many times, but you kind of get my point that you have these controls here to kind of break it up. So I'm just gonna hit Control Z a couple times and that's going to restore it. And now I've got a nice kind of variation of the treetops, which I didn't have before. So then all I have to do is repeat it for all the other locations. And I did the export of the right side because this species is going to be different from these right over here. So these guys, let me just uh, unselect this, okay? These are gonna be like low-lying shrubs. So then to repeat, I'm going to export again, and we'll call them low shrubs. We'll go to desktop and we'll export that out. And I would do this for every different species type, okay? 
That way it's a little bit easier to just do it in batches because it's easier to select in your source app than it is to do in D5. So then you go back to import, you find that asset, low shrubs. I drag it out. I hit my sync and then, and I didn't forget, I said I'd show you what happens if you click a group. If I click group and then I do replace from asset and just for the sake of this, I'm gonna click this tree, right? It's now going to basically group all of them as one asset. So that's no good, right? So I can't do that. Um, it doesn't work. And the problem, you know, the one downside of this workflow is it's kind of destructible. So I can't actually control Z out of this. So let me just drag them back out and then um, sync, to co sync coordinates and then expand my group. You could, if this really bothers you, just like ungroup, um, but it's not the end of the world. Once they're all selected, then you go back to replace assets and let's grab a shrub. And we'll grab something like this. And there we go. Again, this was all perfectly placed by the landscape architect, which is great. So you could use this for people, you know, or cars, anything that was a proxy element. And you have these guys. I would at least minimum use the uh, the rotation. You could play with the sides, like if all of them are just off. So I could just do that. I should have done that with these trees. Um, and in fact, I could easily do that because again, this part isn't destructive because it's all grouped. So I could just lower the size and there we go. So now when I hit randomize size, it's not as dangerous as before. So look at that. So just a couple clicks, I got brand new, fresh D5 assets, all different scales and everything. It's almost like I used the path tool. So that's why you do that. This is also like a good alternative to the scatter tool if you're using, you know, precise locations and you need to do a lot of assets at once. It's kind of like your own scatter tool. So then the last thing I'll point out related to replace assets is it doesn't always have to be from a proxy element. It can actually be from within the D5 library itself. So this, you know, we've got this tree here. Let's say, well, this one tree should be different. I can do the same exact thing. I can hit replace from assets and let me find a different tree. Maybe let's go with flowering and I'll do, I'll do this guy just so it sticks out. And this one tree will be replaced with this species. So there we go. We see it right here. I can then, you know, increase the size here. I'd probably rotate the, um, I'd rotate it not in that direction. Just kidding. I would do it in this direction and there we go. So again, it's not just proxy items. You could do it for anything in the D5 catalog. You can also do this if let's say you scattered an area. So watch this. I scatter this, I do a forest, and I'm just gonna grab this guy. And I'll click here and create. Let's say this one tree doesn't look good or it's in the wrong location. I double click to detach. And now I can do the same exact thing. I can replace that asset from a uh, tree. So let me just go with a conifer, just something to stick out, right? And this will change. There we go. So really helpful. The one downside um, and I do hope this gets fixed, but you know how I clicked one asset for all of these? It'd be really nice if I could select multiple species and then that container of assets gets applied to the selection, almost like how the, um, the path tool works, where if I have, you know, this check marked, this check marked, and let's say this guy, these three will spawn because they're in the container. It'd be great if we had the same functionality for that. It's not like the end of the world for you to just go in and replace, but I think it'd be a little time saver. Anyways, I think this is a super useful tool. Um, it's also just like an easy way to just get custom or precise locations of things into files and it's editable. Like I can't stress enough that the export method is very unique from all the other export or import methods because it recognizes each object as a mesh. We don't get that with this, you know, like here, it does look like it because I'm selecting the material, but this is one model, right? My trees weren't. So that's why it's important. So it's really up to you and like the scenario you're in to think about, okay, am I going to live sync this? Am I going to direct import it or it, or am I going to export it? Exporting in my opinion is perfect for this. 
um, and it's just a fantastic trick. So anyways, hope you guys like this video. If you guys are really interested in like these deep dive videos, highly recommend checking out the Archivist Academy, which we launched last week. Uh, make sure to check that out in the description. As always, if you have questions, drop a comment, a like, and if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps me out. See you next time.